Look up uh, the the Millionaire House with an E. Let me see if I can uh, bring her up. Uh, do do do. Um, let's see. Melanie, can you hear me okay? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Looks great. <laughs> the best Happy Thanksgiving week. <laughs> no, I would just say if there's anything you can do, maybe to, um, give me one second, because I'm coming in kind of loud. If uh, there's anything you could do, oh, no wonder, I have myself bumped up. Um, hey, thank, thank you for uh, being a part of this this morning, Mel. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I was just going to say, if there's anything you can do to get yourself just a little louder, uh, um, I don't know if you're using a laptop mic or, uh, but uh, other than that, it looks great. How about now? Same. Yeah, I think that helped a little bit. So. Everything seems all right on my end. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I know... I know Fisher was just trying to look you up, and uh, you know, so uh, the, you know, I, I came across you uh, on, along Instagram, where you have uh, an amazing following. There, you've uh, done some amazing content, and uh, again, this is your kind of uh, you kind of get like three Super Bowls, right? Like kind of back to back here between Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. <laughs> that that's about right. Uh, so you are you kind of like the uh, um, what what's her name the uh, the one the Martha Stewart of the uh, Millionaire Club is that how this works? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I wouldn't say just that. I, my brand actually has nothing to do with money. It's just a lifestyle brand, okay. and um, my name is Melanie, so it's just a play on my name. Um, but I do yeah all things household, hosting, and a little bit more. All right. Well, I'm, uh, let, let's go over. So, are, are you a big fan or uh, focus a lot on etiquette and what you do as well? There is some etiquette involved. Not a lot, but I can hold my own at a dinner table. <laughs> All right. Well, well, I, I can't. I'm a I'm a redneck from Ocoee, Florida. I, you know, <laughs> and I've married into people that have class, and uh, you know. So, so what are some things? So, if you're if you're uh, you know somebody from uh, the, from the other side of the tracks. And you're going to go to the in-laws, you know, or, or any family gathering, any gathering where people, uh, uh, you know, that have some class. What should people like me keep in mind? Well, um, we're going to mind our manners, right? We're going to bring something to the party. <laughs> that was my That's big question. I should bring something, even though they're in-laws and everything. Uh, so a bottle of wine, something like that should be expected of me. Absolutely. It's always nice to compliment to the hostess to say, thank you for having me. I was thinking of you and here's what I brought to share and contribute. Um, so I'm looking at your website, website here, the millionairehouse.com. And I see that you say, I believe that your home should be a reflection of who you are as a person or a family. And if you focus on those things, it tends to come together quite nicely. Now, if my home is in a disarray and a complete wreck, <laughs> I mean, that is an extension of me. <laughs> and that's okay. It's all about being comfortable in your own home. Because <laughs> I feel like, I feel like uh, Melanie, if, I, if my house were in a perfect uh, working order, well, then I'd be lying to the people. Because if that, if that says something about me, then I'd be lying about who I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It's all about being comfortable. But if you're hosting... You want your guests to be comfortable as well. So you want to tend to the two most important rooms, which is your kitchen and your restroom. Huh. Not the, the main re the restroom that uh, guests would go into, obviously, not the master master uh, restroom, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah, you don't have to have anyone in there. But the ones that everyone, the one that everyone's going to use, you want to make sure it's, that one's ready to go. And by ready to go, you just mean clean, right? <laughs> clean. Full of supplies. <laughs> okay. All right. Full of supplies. All right. So what are some things that uh, people tend to overlook, right, when you're talking about, let's say, something as, uh, as simple as the restroom, right? Is there something that we can kind of do maybe a little differently to make that experience a little better for those visiting and not familiar, again, with the surroundings? Well, you know, it's always, it's always going to depend on your personal style, but I try to pay attention to the small details. So something as little as for me in our in our bathroom, um, rather than hanging a towel, 
I put dinner napkins in the bathroom because a lot of people are germ freaks and they don't want to dry their hands on a towel that someone else has used. With dinner napkins, they can dry their hands and throw it out and everyone everyone wins with something like that. So I, I try to pay attention to small details. Well, so, you know, as a new homeowner and uh, owning a house for the first time in my life, uh, if I were to do something like that, I, I've been told I need to put a sign next to it that says, do not flush these. That, uh, <laughs> or whatever you put in there, make sure that it's thin enough that it is flushable. You no, know your idiot that friends is... toss them into the uh, toilet. That's a great point. And you took the words right out of my mouth, actually. Cute little sign that says, trash goes here. It's perfect. All right, so when, uh, when people uh, track you down and uh, are watching your videos, what are you focusing on when you're trying to uh, help out people? What are some of the main things that, uh, you know, week in and week out uh, you think people should be uh, thinking about? So I try to show people the easy way to do things that may seem difficult. So whether it be how to style your table for Thanksgiving dinner or, or right now I'm doing a series on YouTube where I'm showing people how to get ready for Christmas. Um, so it's just, um, it's just about showing people how to do things that appear difficult or appear unachievable. And it, there's but always it, a way to do it if you have steps. You, you said it's cheap and easy, but it will make me look classy in the end? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the appearance of, uh, of classiness. <laughs> Um, so, uh, uh, Johnny Torres was telling me that, um, that every now and again, I guess you pick up a mix up a specialty drink. It's one of your things, right? What, uh, right. Minute. that's what I'd like to do instead of bringing just a bottle of wine. Uh, what would be a cool drink? You know, something that's not going to put people on their butt. I'm not, you know, this is not talking about a, a Jägermeister mixed with, uh, you know, Johnny Walker mixed with Jack Daniels, uh, but a good holiday say a mixture of things I could bring to my in-laws for the weekend and be the head. Well, of the party. you know, and be the head of the party at this time of year, the uh, Moscow mules are really popular. Um, mm. They're cold. They're refreshing. They're... I'm sorry. That's vodka based, right? Correct. I put vodka in mine and then ginger beer, really easy to make, really delicious. The Do other favorite the that, no, no, you don't have to serve them in those mugs. You can, um, you can serve them in a, a regular glass too. Good. The mugs are just, they're fancy. <laughs> what are some other good ones for the holidays? I also like chocolate martinis. Those are the ones that I serve when people come over to die with chocolate. Again, there's vodka involved. And that's always a good time. <laughs> and, and Melanie, what, what will uh, you be setting out for Santa Claus uh, this year? What will I be setting out for Santa? He likes um, he Martini. likes smoking cookies at our house. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 keep him we keep him sober. He's got a lot of uh, light crafting to do that night, so we <laughs> we keep it light. Uh, so, are the holidays stressful for you, or uh, you know, I know he asked you earlier, is this like your Super Bowl? So, is this? But the Super Bowl can be stressful too. Is this a stressful time of year, or do you get excited this time of year? Um, it can be, but I've learned to not sweat the small stuff. So I get excited. It's all about planning, um, having having a plan for whether you're visiting or whether you're hosting, um, and, and really having everyone participate. You know, you can ask people to bring something to your house. You can have something for the kids to do so that they feel like they're involved, whether it be watching the Macy's Day Parade and counting um giant floats or whether it be break and bake cookies something to keep them busy um but yeah you, you have to be able to work through the stress of it all and just enjoy it because at the end of the day you're making memories right and this is something that people have to uh, keep in mind as well stress eating uh over the holidays it's been, your friends <laughs> in the town and you're trying to uh, keep it together for a few or for a few days until they uh, head back north um yeah, you just can't see. So next hour, we're going to balance Melanie out next hour with a uh, nutritional, a nutrition expert. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that, yeah, like, a, you know, I was about to say, you know, we need to get to the important stuff, which is the food. Right. So that's what tomorrow's all about. Yeah. Everybody's looking for it. Somebody actually on Twitter uh, made a list of uh, the most popular vegetables and they ranked them, you know, for Thanksgiving. Uh, not a vegetable guy myself. But what do you see as kind of 
maybe a new spin on a traditional dish or uh, or maybe something that's being introduced to Thanksgiving now that maybe uh, wasn't being done uh, previously? Um, you know, that's a tough one. I'm actually not hosting this year. I'm visiting. Um, I can't say that I've seen any new spins, but I always try to serve vegetables. I'm the type of girl, I like my carbs. So when I'm hosting, I, I tend to go heavy on corn casserole and sweet potato casserole, but people, there are people that like vegetables, right? So you try to throw in a broccoli casserole in there or, or some sort of green that your, your healthier people are going to be able to enjoy. Just put it in a casserole. That makes it real healthy. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's on everything. <laughs> and now this uh, broccoli, is, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> broccoli soup is not a healthy meal. It's All delicious, way. though. So uh, my my family now, uh, you know, we we well, we've always gotten together. But I was telling Fish over the over the past week that we've started to get more traditional uh, because we're a first generation family. So I was first generation born in the United States. My family, you know, immigrated from South America here. So slowly they've started to incorporate more of the traditional type dishes. Um, but of course I would think for any family hosting a Thanksgiving, the big question mark is how much food should I make? And so when it comes to Turkey or even some of the more popular dishes, you know, what are, what are some of the, you know, how do you, how do you do the math there, uh, when it comes to that kind of thing? You actually don't have to, <laughs> you know, when you go into the store and you, and you buy your food, all you got to do is know about how many people are coming and every grocer will be able to help you figure out how much food you need, how much, how big of a turkey you need, how big of a ham you need. You don't have to try to do the guesswork. Well, very cool. And then anything uh, you kind of see, I mean, you also do some amazing decorating. So I highly encourage everybody to go uh, to your Instagram account and uh, I'll post your uh, Instagram handle there one more time up top. But um, it, do you, uh, I mean, you, you, you got to move, move it back over your head a little bit. Oh, I know. It's, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've already decorated for Christmas and it goes to show. I do uh, follow your Instagram account. So, I mean, did you just completely, I mean, do you think it's okay to just kind of completely skip over like th Thanksgiving or fall decorating? Um, not necessarily. I actually don't skip over it. I just do it earlier. Um, as bloggers and vloggers, we have to have our content ready early so that we can inspire the people. So we have to do, do it all in advance. So my tree went up on October 15th so that I could have all my content ready for YouTube by the end of the month because that's when people start looking for inspiration for the holidays. That's awesome. And uh, when we have you back after the holidays, I uh, was just looking at one of your blogs and like I said, as a new home buyer, there's a lot of new stuff going on. And so we have uh, our, our laundromat coming in. We have our washer dryer coming in. <laughs> and so uh, that looks like it was your latest blog about how to, uh, you know, make that the most functional as you possibly can and make it look good and whatnot. So we'll have you back on and I'll show you the corner awesome. that I'm working with. You can help us out. <laughs> I'd be happy to. Well, well I'll, I'll jump in here just for one last question since uh, the new homeowner didn't ask. They haven't. <laughs> they haven't started decorating, right? Am I right, uh, Fisher? You haven't started decorating a house yet. Oh no, no. Yeah, we so, still have holes in everything. So where do they start? Like, what's a good starter kit to decorate your home? Right. So you want to start in the rooms that you're going to use the most. Usually, that's going to be a family room, your kitchen, or your bedroom. Um, those are the rooms that you want to get comfortable because that's where you're going to spend most of your time, and then you can decide where to go from there. But that's always my suggestion to new homeowners. Start in the places where you're going to spend the most time. All right. So don't experiment in the rooms we're not using. Just go ahead and get right <laughs> into the master and, uh, you know, put some paint <laughs> on the walls. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, Melanie Graves, thank you so much for uh, joining us today on the wake dot show. Make sure you track her down on the internet, the millionaire house.com, the millionaire house.com. Is that also your Instagram? Yes, it's also my Instagram and my YouTube channel. Melanie, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks, guys. Have a great day and happy Thanksgiving. Same to you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, well done.
Yeah, that was very cool. She's awesome. Um, you know, she, she, again, like her Instagram account, like if you're into that sort of thing, like uh, Fixer Upper and, uh, you know, those kind of TV shows, uh, I think, uh, you know, she's a great account to follow. I mean, again, she's got over 70,000 people following her. Uh, and the majority of the pictures she posts are actually of her house, if you can believe it or not. Because when you go on there, it doesn't even look real. It looks like a model home. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it definitely takes talent to do that sort of decorating. Uh, and then, uh, her drink recipes are pretty awesome too. So you got to check those out. And I, and I, there's this, uh, you know, because I come from a place where, you know, I don't want to say we were low class or anything like that, you know, but like first generation people off the farm or whatnot. I mean, my mom take pride in what we had, but it was not over the top. We're always looking to get that much more fancy or something like that. But my wife, you know, she, uh, you know, we watch a lot of those fixer upper, you know, shows and those kinds of things. And I know she wants to have this house look like a model home, like yeah. you just said. And uh, I, I don't know if I'm built for a model home. I, you know, <laughs> it's best to look better to look at me more like a gorilla. Well, you can't and, like. Well, you feel like you can't touch anything. Well, I mean, I, I just because that's always my thing. Like when you walk into a house that's very well decorated, my issue is always like. I, I don't want to touch anything. I don't want, like, I feel I'm, like I'm going to break something along the way. I, uh, you know, I, I, that, that's me. I'm a, I break stuff. Just the other day, the ADT sign, uh, she couldn't get back in. She whatever the uh, situation was. I was like, I got it. So I grab a hammer, just go boom, boom, boom. And that last uh, one chipped the side, right? Mm-hmm. Now, to, to me, so this is the difference between her and I. To me, I'm like, oh, whatever, whatever. It chipped a little piece of plastic off the ADT sign. No big deal. But to her, that just ruined everything because she's a little bit more OCD and she likes straight lines and, you know, that kind of stuff. And so that kind of thing just doesn't work for her. Which sure. I get it. I'm going to uh, track down ADT and get another sign put in there. But kind of extrapolate that out and, you know, spread it across the house. And that's, we're going to run into a lot of those kinds of things where I'm, I go to get something done, and pr- I maybe mean, I don't know. Maybe we just talk this out right now, and I'll get it into my head that <laughs> around here that I can't do it the the Chris way, the Fisher way, and that is just head first, figure it out, make sure it's up and working, but not care too much about how it looks or how it got there, or if you broke apart along the way to make that happen. Yeah, so sure. I guess it's slowing down, YouTubing stuff first, looking up instruction f- first, not getting frustrated. And then tackling uh, these tasks is out there. Well, you know, uh, for the sake of uh, show content, you know, we'll just have to have uh, Melanie back on, and uh, maybe we'll we'll do one where it's live from your house, and then yes. she, <laughs> she just that way starts I, giving I, you pointers I, on how to decorate. Yeah, that way I never try to tackle something on my own, mm-hmm. and uh, I've always got somebody looking over my shoulder and yelling at me along the way. Well, I yep. guess I have. I'm married. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, do you want to uh, hit some of the stuff, some of the news today? Let's do it. I'll uh, we have, pull back up uh, our list of stories. Well, actually, uh, you know, we had talked about doing stuff you should know twice a show now, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, maybe we, you know, we start off the show, build a little audience here at the beginning. We don't do it right at 7 o'clock, you know, say, I don't know if it's like 7.02 we get into stuff you should know or 7.05. Yeah, I think 7.05 would be good. All right. Well, if that is the case, then it is that time again. Let's go ahead and hit the uh, stuff you should know. Plus, we were having a lot of uh, technical difficulties uh, a little bit earlier, and they were on my end. I apologize, by the way. I mean, I don't know what I, I didn't touch anything. I don't know how it happened. No, it, it started on our end, uh, on my end here at the studio, and then I, I, I think somehow that kind of messed around with uh, your setup. So, but we're good now. All right. Well, mostly cloudy today, a high of 80. Thunderstorms likely for Thanksgiving, high of 76 with isolated storms on Black Friday. Let me take a sip. And we'll get to stuff you should know. (laughs) This is where uh, it'd be great for a coffee sponsor to come on. and That would be nice. That would be nice. You don't have to pay anything. A lot of coffee, though. I mean, you're still there. There's a lot of money coming out of your pocket. We need somebody to come on that uh, delivers breakfast is what we need. (laughs) No, man. Uh, Yes and no. I'm with you on that one. Uh, although I don't know that our waistlines uh, would be thanking us in about six months. That's true. And, uh, you know, all the more reason why we're having uh, Eric on the show today. Unless, I mean, you're, 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 we, we got that Cuban place right up the road there. If you're not careful, oh, yeah. I'm, you're Colombian. I'm whatever the hell I am. Uh, I'm, 
cocky. I don't know, whatever I am. If we're not, <laughs> we'll both become a couple of fat old Cuban guys. Is my point. Oh it's yeah, the punch I'm trying to get at without the setup. Uh, I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, and you know, hey, maybe we just need. I I would be happy just to have an intern just to do a breakfast run. I'm with you, buddy. <laughs> uh, Adam Matos gets life in prison, not death. Ten jurors wanted uh, Matos to be uh, executed for the deaths of his ex-girlfriend, Megan Brown, her father, Gregory Brown, and her boyfriend, Nick Leonard. And 11 jurors wanted this guy executed for the beating of Megan Brown's mother, Margaret Brown, who was bludgeoned repeatedly in the head with a hammer. But a unanimous vote is required for a death sentence under Florida law, and they did not get one. U.S. Navy plane with 11 aboard crashes. Eight people have been found alive or in good condition after the U.S. Navy plane with 11 uh, crashed into the sea off Japan while on the way to the USS Ronald Reagan aircraft carrier earlier today. Uh, the search and rescue for three other personnel continues. David Cassidy, Cassidy is dead at the age of 67. The Partridge family star uh, died due to organ failure. He did have a history of alcohol abuse. The mayors of Tampa and Orlando make a beer wager before Friday's game. I love this stuff. Do you, do you like this? Do you, this I do. Is, uh, I, I think it's it. fun. I don't know. Yeah. I do. I think it's fun. It's good for the communities. Um, and uh, they've made their wager before the USF UCF game this Friday. The Knights, undefeated. I mean, go Knights. Man, it's just Florida team. I don't care. Uh, beat the Bulls. If they beat the Bulls, Tampa Mayor Bob Buckhorn will have to raise the UCF flag at Tampa City Hall. And send Cigar City beer and Ebor cigars to Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer. If the Bulls win, uh, we get Disney. Nice. Huh. That is a not a deal. bad. That is not a bad wager whatsoever. If the Bulls win, they're nine and one. Uh, Dyer will have to raise the USF flag at Orlando City Hall. He also will have to send Buckhorn uh, Orlando Brewing beer, which I'm sure is disgusting. And <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I'm uh, I'm actually from that area. Um, and a cornhole set. I got a I got a USF Bulls cornhole set right here, sitting right in front of me. Uh, President Trump um, fi- fires back at the father of a basketball player who was released from China this month. I don't know why he's still going back and forth with this guy after sparring with man Trump. Of- You're right. You're right. Over uh, his level of gratitude, uh, President Trump. So uh, we'll, we'll come back to that story because the tweets are hilarious. Yeah. Uh, CBS employees steal. I mean, I, I'm so torn on this stuff because on one hand, I am so awesomely entertained by what Donald <laughs> Trump does. But on the other hand, I go, wait, wait, wait. He's my president. <laughs> All right. A CBS employee steals man's lottery ticket. A customer claims that a CBS employee stole his $1 million ticket. Carlos Figu- uh, Figueroa claims that he was coerced um, into giving this employee half the ticket to check to see if it was good. Well, the man disappears for 20 minutes, comes back, hands him a different ticket. That is not a winner. We'll see how that one plays out. And that's stuff you should know for Wednesday, uh, Thanksgiving Eve. You do anything uh, special? Or are you going to get on the road uh, and try to get back down to Miami after the show? Yeah, that's definitely yeah, the that's goal. Definitely the goal. Um, um, I mean, as soon as we're done here, going to gonna jump in the car, maybe uh, – grab a bite somewhere, uh, you know, uh, a drive through somewhere, and then hit the road. Mm, what's your go-to drive through if you have a choice? Is it Checkers, Burger King, McDonald's, Wendy's, Hardee's, Arby's? <laughs> for, breakfast, a- for breakfast, it's a toss-up, man. Uh, you know, I'll do Mickey D's or Burger King or Chick-fil-A, uh, of, of which we have all three. No, you know what? I've never, uh, I've never done the McGriddle. I'm more of a sausage, egg, and biscuit kind of guy. No, I, I, there's something about the McGriddle. Probably it has because it, it's loaded with fat and sugar. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, but it already has the hint of maple syrup like in the bun. Yeah. But years later, you know, I, I don't even know. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. Uh, I saw somebody order it with a side of actual maple syrup. Oh, and boy. Then dip, that is candy Oof. for breakfast right there. Well, as a uh, kid, I always loved getting the big breakfast, right? You know which was the eggs and the pancakes and the hash brown and all that stuff. Uh, but I haven't done that in a long time. The I don't know what it is about the McDonald's sausage patty. I I love I, that is just one of my favorite <laughs> things on the planet. Well, and, and Burger King, while I can't stand their fries, I love me some croissant. Um, I don't know, something about their croissant. 
uh, you know, speaks to me. And so, uh, you know, sometimes that's a go-to as well. Um, and, and even like getting the Wawa, you know, version of that is okay, but it's still not as good as the Burger King one. No, the Seven Eleven version of that is not bad, believe it or not. I bet. Yeah, and uh, you were talking about Chick Fil A. Uh, Chick Fil A, I like to uh, I get their big ass breakfast sandwich on their bagel. Yeah, the big you know fried piece of chicken and an egg <laughs> on a I think multi grain or something like that bagel. All right, uh, all right. So let's wrap this up because I'm hungry. It's funny we're uh, we're getting into this discussion about food. Uh, coming up here in 20 minutes, we'll have Eric Stratman on from TNL Nutrition, and uh, he is. We'll be we talking. Well, just you know, because a lot of people. Going into this time of year, got two. We have we have three types of people. You got the people that do pretty good all year long with their weight and uh, you know their diet and exercise and stuff like that. They get to this time of year and things fall to crap, but they pick it back up in January. They're back on and they've lost that five pounds before you know it, and they're doing it again. You've got another group of people who uh, who have already blown whatever diet by this time of year and aren't going to care but are looking to start a new lifestyle on January 1st or 2nd. And, uh, and so they're just good. They're going to gorge themselves and then start whatever they're going to uh, start. And then there's the yeah, third type of person, the person who is not weak <laughs> and stays healthy all year long and has no problem with portion control this time of year. That is very, that is a small percentage of people. And scr- I mean, good for you. We need to be, all of us need to be more like you. So what is that you look forward to? What what's the uh I mean is it just the turkey or the ham? Well, turkey with the gray. I'm a dark meat kind of a guy. Really? Uh, yeah, white meat just seems know, dry compared to I don't know what it is about the dark meat. I like dark meat. I, I don't have to explain myself. Okay. I don't buy anything. Um See, but, but I've uh, always been a fan of you know, like I'm the I'm the kid. So in high school, I would when uh I would go to Disney, right, for some school trip or something like that. I would get a turkey leg, which the turkey legs, of course, at Disney are amazing. And then I would find the longest line at an attraction that I wanted to, to ride. And I'd get in line with the turkey leg. And, of course, everybody hates you, which is hilarious uh, because it smells so good. And by the time you get on the ride, you're done. You're done. <laughs> You've got grease dripping down your forearm. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. That is genius. Oh, yeah. Because- the reason, one of the reasons why I am not the biggest fan, I grew up right around the corner from Disney, but not the biggest fan of theme parks has to do with the lines. And I've been very fortunate to be in the media for my adult life. And, uh, you know, so you, you have those couple times or at least once a year, if not twice a year, where you uh, go out there in official capacity and somebody is leading you to the front of the line. Uh, so that is always amazing. But had I known this trick, <laughs> had I thought of this uh, oh my gosh! I, I, that's 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 life changing to me. Because I mean, it's not just about that one turkey leg in one line. Yeah, it's about it's about a bag full of churros in the next line, <laughs> <laughs> and then something else in the next line. And you're saving time, and you're enjoying more of the park. You know, it gives you something to do while you're standing in line, staring at people you don't know. Because normally I'm going. Well, let's go get a beer. Let's go get a drink. But but that's gone within minutes. Yeah. But no, even that, gonna... you could grab a beer and get in line. Grab a beer and a turkey leg. I don't want any yes. of hanging around my neck. <laughs> <laughs> hanging around my neck. So I have a one, you know, I like it. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, uh, got to learn something a, new every day. Got a um, you know, family coming in to, into town for the holidays like a lot of people are. Yeah. Uh, do When they come down from up north, they like to go to one of these theme parks. Sure. Uh, do you have a preference? When family comes and goes, hey, which uh, theme park is it? Bush? I, I love them all. I mean, yeah. outside the line thing that I'm talking the crowds, I'm not the biggest fan of. Once I get there, I usually have a good time, and I, I love them all. Uh, if we're sticking to Tampa, um, well, that narrows it down to Bush Gardens. Yeah, I mean, it, it's either that, or obviously, you know, there's still some novelty to Clearwater Marine Aquarium, you know, because of the movie tie-in and everything. Um, although I would have to say my favorite what's attraction, that? what's that? <laughs> But it's no Bush Gardens. No, but I would have to say, actually, my favorite attraction, I would say, in Tampa Bay, to me personally, is probably the Dali Museum. Um, to me, is unbelievable. It is, it is world class. It, is, uh, that, it doesn't get any better than that. I've only been there once, and it was for a wedding. Can, yeah. I, tell, can I tell you my uh, Dali story? <laughs> sure. 
well because it's spooky. Oh, uh, it was for a wedding. It was friends of ours, but I w- was uh, I don't know the MC or so, the host kind of a thing. I was the one pushing the buttons and making sure that the music was playing and what. Okay. Um, so I'm down at down at the bottom level where that I guess that is their cafe area, right? And then you know they have the upper level where it splits off into two. They'll have a huge exhibit on one side, which is Dali, Salvador Dali's, and a, another exhibit on the other side, whatever you know in town. And uh, so everybody was up around that area because that's where the wedding was going to take place. I was downstairs because I was controlling the music. So we're uh, getting ready to get things uh, started. And next thing you know, out of nowhere, a cane almost hits me. It falls from the upper level hmm. and almost hits me. It lands on the table. Boom, bounces off, lands on the floor. I was like, what the hell is that? I'm looking around. I'm expecting to see, you know, some, uh, you know, somebody who looking over the rail. Sure. Saying, I'm sorry. There was nothing, nobody, nothing saying, oh, oh, I don't weird. know where this thing is. Yeah. Uh, but everybody saw it. Everybody saw what happened, you know, and then, you know, we laughed and we moved on with the ceremony. Hmm. Uh, it was one of those little hook canes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hook cane. But, you know, modern one, you know, it was made of metal. So after the ceremony, you have the cocktail hour. The cocktail hour, we were allowed to wander through the museum, which is really, really cool. So I get to, a chance to go check out the, the Salvador Dali exhibit. exhibit. I walk in. As soon as you walk in, there is a huge picture of Salvador Dali sitting there. I think he's laying on a, a couch or something like that with a hook cane in his hand. Oh, get out. It, and when that cane fell, I made a joke, you know, that uh, it was the ghost of Salvador Dali uh, blessing this, you know, the ceremony, blessing this day. Uh, that was a that was an omen. That was a good sign. Yeah. Because it, had it hit me and killed me or knocked me out, that's a bad omen. <laughs> so I made a joke that uh, that was Salvador Dali. Yeah. Uh, and then I get upstairs, go see that. And the first thing I see is him holding this big uh, hook cane, just like the one that fell. Oh, that's I, so weird. I got goosebumps. I smiled because, and man, I don't know if there's anything to that kind of stuff or not, but yeah. in my crazy head, there is. And I just smiled, nodded to uh, Salvador, and then went to the exhibit. That's my Salvador movie uh, story. And and nobody claimed the cane. Yeah, I never know. I never knew where the cane came from. Wow. Uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of odd. You, you would think if you, you drop your cane over the side of a rail. Sure. Well, I guess in less than. Well, maybe the person fell down. That it was that. that <laughs> maybe once the cane fell, they fell backwards, and that's why they weren't looking over the rail at me. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I, uh, you know, to kind of uh, go back to your question, I'm a Disney guy. You know, I worked at Disney. Um, I love everything they kind of stand for. Uh, even kind of pulling back, you know, some of the 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 cheesiness, right? You know, some of the the Disney magic. Uh, I think they're just uh, continually impressive as a company, you know, in terms of what uh, what they co- uh, constantly accomplish. You know, like they always seem to be trying to raise the bar in terms of entertainment. Are they paying you right now or something? Are you still a cast? I just love it, man. No, I love it. I mean, like if, if, if is it a cult? What's your end? <laughs> Good. Yeah, something like that. You know, it, it truly it's one of those places that if you don't believe in the quote unquote magic, the Disney magic, you're you're not going to last uh, very long working there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there, to me, there's nothing better in the world than spending uh, some time at Disney. And when I was an employee, uh, I would even go there all, on my days off. I, uh, I probably would too. <laughs> uh, just a quick rundown of the comments here. Chris is jumping in on our, uh, uh on our conversation about, uh, Thanksgiving and the food. And so happy Thanksgiving to Chris Brown, Paul Grothman, uh, my buddy, Matt Morales out in Arizona. Um, and, uh, Chris says, he goes, uh, I did a challenge before the holidays this year. Uh, yes, it's going to suck, but I will be third in that group this year. Um, not sure what the challenge is. Um, but, uh, he, he's also, he says the dark meat has the delicious fat in it. Happy Thanksgiving. You know what it is? Is that why I like it more? Of course. Yeah, like the fat piece of meat. Oh, that's uh, the best part, man. But man, I uh, ham. I if I love the s out of ham, especially those honey baked hams. Well, yeah. Actually, no, it doesn't matter. I love those honey baked hams. I love those little uh, you know ham steaks that you fry up uh, real quick. Uh, I think well, and thanks to Boston Market, now it's actually a possibility. But 
I, I always felt that like oven roasted turkey, like, you know, the tur- Thanksgiving turkey should be available year round. And I mean, now it is right again, thanks to places like the Boston market. But I mean, before when you're only getting it like once, maybe twice a year, I mean, that was torture. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're out. I can see you. Uh, you're putting on camouflage, painting up your face, and you're out <laughs> searching for wild turkey uh, in March. Oh, I couldn't get enough of it. Couldn't. You need your turkey fix. Yeah. Um, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I uh, hope uh, you at some point over the next couple of days, uh, you know, no matter how stressed out you are, uh, you're you can't wait for this relative to get leave or whatever. Um, make sure you take a deep breath. <sighs> I just think about those things that you are thankful for, those things that you take we take advantage of uh, throughout the year, the simple stuff in life. And there is a lot to be thankful for, a lot to focus on to get you annoyed and worked up and riled and angry. There's also plenty to get uh, be thankful for. Um, let's talk about the uh, passing of David Cassidy. You know, I uh, I want to say he's before my time, but he was he was hot in the '70s. I was born in the '70s, and uh, although the Partridge family and uh, was that other one that everybody watched with the with the uh, the Brady Bunch um, were somewhat there. They're kind of in the periphery. They were obviously huge. Um, well, were they already the, getting into reruns at that point? I mean, is that kind of what you were catching? Yeah, I wasn't catching anything live. Um, but anyway, he uh, looks like he. You know, they're not one hundred percent sure if this had anything to do with uh, the the alcoholism uh, alcoholism that he had fought over the years. Um, but he did die of organ failure, very young, 67 years old. And wow. uh, so I want to go over some of the uh, celebrity responses to this because uh, they're interesting names, these, these icons from the 70s. Gloria Gaynor being one of them. I will survive. My thoughts and prayers are with the family and loved ones of David Cassidy, part of a musical legacy via his role as Keith Partridge that brought music and laughter into the homes of millions. Harry Connick Jr., so sad to hear of the passing of David Cassidy. He was always so kind to me. Such a pleasure to have him on my show, sending love and prayers to his family. R.I.P. friend. From Marley Martin. Do you know who Marley Martin is? No, maybe they meant Marley Matlin. Oh, sorry, Matlin. Uh, <laughs> Marley Martlin. No, Marley Matlin, you moron. Uh, you were so sweet to me, and you left us too soon. To me and millions, uh, you are forever young. Uh, Marie Osmond, heartbroken over the passing of David Cassidy. He graced the cover of teen magazines with my brothers in the 70s. My condolences to his family. Uh, trivia question. How many children does Marie Osmond have? Ooh, they're Mormon, so that's, uh, that's a tricky one. Um, I'm going to guess six. Eight. Brian Wilson, I'm very sad to hear about David Cassidy. There were times in the mid-1970s when he would come over to my house and we even started writing a song together. He was very talented and a nice person. Love and mercy to David and his family. Belinda Carlisle, too young, way too young. R.I.P. David Cassidy, you made so many of us happy for so many years. Ben Stiller, uh, David Cassidy and the Partridge family were, in, or were my childhood. He made a huge impact on my uh, cultural universe, sending love and respect to his family. So sad to hear from Jimmy Osmond. Uh, so sad to hear the passing of my dear friend, David Cassidy. I'm grateful he was one. Uh, he had one last time working to, or we had one last time working together at my theater. He did an amazing show with what was on one of his last gigs. RIP, my friend. And then lastly, Scott Bayo. My condolences to the Cassidy family. I knew David Cassidy and saw him a couple of years ago. He was extremely talented. May God bless his soul. You know, as uh, you you and I get older, you know, I uh, more and more of of those people who we grew up with are are leaving us. Um, now, David Cassidy is way too young. You know, it's, I, I, yeah, I mean, but it's going to be weird. I mean, it was it was really uh, hard on me, you know, with the passing of Michael Jackson. I mean, despite all the controversy and whether he did or didn't do all the things that were kind of going on about him. Uh, he was somebody that had a huge impact in my life. One of my earliest memories ever as a child was his infamous performance at the American Music Awards where he did the moon, uh, the moonwalk for the first time. And that's one of my earliest memories ever of anything. Um, huh. And, and I w- I've always been uh, a huge fan of his. I was fortunate to see him at his what ended up being his final concert ever. 
um, which which even crazily enough was September 10th, 2001, right before September 11th, the next day. Um, I was at Madison Square Garden, and I got to see the big, um, the, the the big. It was the retirement tour, right? It was like the retirement concert, um, and the Sunday, because September 11th was on a Tuesday, right? Uh, I think it fell on a Tuesday. And um, and so the Sunday performance was aired on CBS, um, and then the Monday performance was the one I attended. But, I mean, it was just an incredible lineup of A-list performers. And the opportunity to see him perform with his brothers again, to me, was what I would imagine would be the equivalent of seeing the Beatles perform again. Wow. It was yeah. just to see all the Jackson brothers on stage performing once again it, it there i just i've never had an experience like that again but yeah his death was incredibly uh hard on me when it comes to like celebrities and that sort of thing i, I really felt so, that one when you, heard, when you heard of his death you you paused it it it, it stung you it wasn't like oh michael jackson's dead okay you're back to your conversation it was something that made you take pause yeah no absolutely uh because he's had such a cultural impact on me and my family you know my my mom grew up watching the jackson five you know that my my aunt and my mom were all fans of the jackson five and then they kind of passed the torch on to me you know when he went solo and i mean growing up in the 80s as a kid like you know who wasn't a fan of michael jackson and uh and obviously that wavered as some of the controversy came out but i always remained a fan and i always loved uh his work and his level of talent and He's one of those people, as we see him move on, as uh, you know, people like Madonna and uh, you know, and even you know, some of the other artists that are in that universe. Uh, I think that's going to be the end of an era. I don't think we're going to see artists, you know, on that scale uh, for for ever, maybe, uh, or for some time. Maybe. Uh, I was surprised on how affected I was by Robin Williams. Hmm. Okay. Uh, in that. And uh, yeah, because that that was when that happened. That kind of I don't, for, for a similar re now, I guess uh, kind of like Michael Jackson to you, Robin Williams was to me uh, growing up. You know, when I'm thinking about some of the earliest memories of things that I remember, uh, Mork and Mindy is one of those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Favorites as a as a kid, uh, but that that's not early early memories. But there was something about Robin Williams, and I remember you as a an 11, 12, 13, something like that, and telling my mom if I'm ever on my deathbed. Uh, to please contact Robin Williams and see if he would come visit. <laughs> uh, but then, yeah, years later, and I don't know if it, it was because he killed himself uh, that it affected me so much. Probably. I think it, if it were, you know, something else. Um, but I think it was because, you know, you watch somebody like that who's so successful and seems to, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's had his issues with, uh, you know, uh, drug abuse and whatnot over the years. But yeah. there's a lot of people in the entertainment industry. Well, he touched so many people with because he was, you so know, many different kinds of characters and roles. Yes, yeah, right, exactly. And and again, you know, you mentioned before. I don't know if it was on a previous show or just in conversation that you grew up listening to comedy, you know. And uh, and while that really wasn't a thing in my household, I love stand up comedy. And I remember watching Comic Relief. I was obsessed with the Comic Relief specials. You know, that was him, Whoopi, and Billy Crystal. Uh, and 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 so. Yeah, I mean, it was, it's incredibly shocking uh, because especially the circumstances under which that happened, you know, you never want somebody to go out that way, especially when they have so much to offer and they've touched so many lives. Yeah. Um, let's I see, think my mom was about... really big on the uh, David Cassidy. I think she was uh, a Partridge family. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she was big in the Partridge family and that sort of thing. Coming up in 15 minutes, uh, Eric Stratman will be joining us. We'll talk a little uh, nutrition and health going into the uh, holidays here and how to uh, get yourself mentally prepared uh, to start a new diet or get back to it, uh, you know, come Jan 1 or Jan 2, whenever you uh, make that start. The first Monday after the uh, new year, maybe, is when you make that uh, start. Uh, but we'll hit a couple of things before then. Um, the Olympic gymnast Gabby Douglas opens up about abuse and a new apology. Now, since going public with her allegations of being sexually abused, um, uh, Olympic gymnast Allie Raceman has been using her fame to stand up for victims. Now, there was a little controversy here because another gymnast fires off that, uh, you know, something that was taken as victim shame. Um, so we'll get to that here in just one second. But she first spoke out Sunday on 60 Minutes where she alleged that she was sexually abused by Larry Nasser. This is coming from BuzzFeed's, uh, BuzzFeed News. 
who was a doctor for the USA gymnastics women's team at the time. Uh, he has been accused of sexually assaulting dozens of gymnasts, including uh, her teammate, Michaela Maroney, yep. and is currently facing criminal charges, as well as multiple lawsuits. So she says, I am beyond disgusted that a decorated Olympic and USA gymnastics doctor was able to prey upon so many over such a long period of time. And until we fully understand the flaws in the system that allowed this to happen in the first place and enable it to continue for decades, we can't be confident it won't happen again. I am determined to work towards real and meaningful change. Um, but then she had a teammate. And this is uh, where Gabby Douglas comes in kind of disagreed with what she was uh, uh, saying there. She goes, however, it is our responsibility as women to dress modestly and be classy. Dressing in provocative sexual ways entices the wrong crowd. And so and so now she's apologizing for what seems like a, a victim shaming. Well, that's the, that's the one thing they'll always jump over. You, you know, the whole, well, she was asking for it because of the way she was dressed. I mean, that's going to get you every single time. Well, that's what she said. She goes, oh, well, then you, what you're saying is all of us in leotards then deserved what we got. Sure, yeah. All right. Which, I mean, if, 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 and, you know, I know a little bit about this. I did gymnastics, and I, you know, I was a high school and college cheerleader, and, and you become desensitized to it. You really do. I mean, the average person becomes desensitized to it. So to, to see... What? To see gymnasts and, you know, leotards or, you know, in cheerleading to, you know, they, the girls are wearing, uh, you know, what they call bloomers over their underwear. You know, uh, of course, you know, most the average person doesn't probably know that. But you become it, it, the, the sexuality behind it uh, no longer becomes a factor. There's no for you, for you in, in gymnastics, but not to the average person that's sitting on the sidelines. Yeah, but this was a coach, right? Like this was somebody that was working with them. And so. To your point, when I was working at Went Wild uh, as a lifeguard, you think, oh, it's, that's great. You know, you're, you know, you're right. It was. It was awesome as a young man. Um, but at the same time, I couldn't believe how desensitized I came to boobs popping out. Like when I first started working there, you're in your sunglasses looking everywhere. And then, I don't know, six months, nine months, a year, <laughs> however long it took. Uh, and it was just like, oh, ma'am, your boob popped out. Ma'am, your boob popped out. Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Uh, but fans were quick to point out she was literally engaging in the definition of victim shaming. And how dare she quote Allie's tweet with a disgusting victim blaming response. Someone who's supposed to be one of her best friends. I am shocked and disgusted. And then uh, Douglas then replied uh, that she was trying to say responsibility goes both ways. No, it does not. Another fan said sexual assault is never the victim's fault. Uh, Gabby. Uh, fellow Olympic teammate Simone Biles then tweeted her support for Raceman and all the other victims of assault. Uh, so Gabby, you know, she had written, however, it's our responsibility as women to dress modestly and be classy. Dressing in provocative sexual ways entices the wrong crowd. Um, and Simone goes, shocks me that I'm seeing this, but it doesn't surprise me. Honestly, seeing this brings me to tears because as your teammate, I expected more from you and to support her. I support you, Allie, and all the w other women out there. Stay strong. Do you think that uh, this could be a possible coping mechanism? Like, say, for uh, Gabby there, Gabby Douglas, uh, and for other women that immediately go to, it's our responsibility because it is hard for some of us to, to, to imagine being in a situ situation that is so out of our control that we end up becoming victims. So if, you're, if you, you can't wrap your head around that, then in your head you are going uh it, it's part it's part the victim's fault too you know that you know you because as they're trying to grapple with it, with this because this doesn't make sense to me how, yeah. how a teammate like this would come out and, and retweet uh after ali rassman uh is coming out and and sharing this with the world which is not easy and then you got to one of your best friends going yeah but don't forget let's not forget the way we dress no, you're absolutely right, and I think the I think the reason that that tends to be the kind of default reaction for some people, especially in a situation like this, is because you are talking about uh, a coach, right? Somebody that they spent hours a day with, countless days, countless hours, traveled around the world with, and trust there, there should be there was a trust sure. there. And, family and that coach. 
And you don't want to believe that something like this, A, did happen, and B, what happened at the hands of someone that you've spent so much time with and that you've surrounded yourself with. You know, it, 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 I would say it's probably the equivalent of, you know, finding out that you have a relative who has done, you know, things to minors or something like that, as you often hear about, you know, uh, relatives or friends of the family or something like that who, you know, abuse children and, you know, it's like the initial reaction by the family oftentimes is, no, 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 there's no way that's true. Um, when in fact, again, most of these types of situations do happen with relatives and someone that's close to the family. Uh, and, and it's that initial reaction, I think, by family members that makes a lot of the victims take pause because they don't think they're going to be believed. Uh, and they, and, and, and so, and they feel that they might be ostracized by the family for even making an accusation like that. And that's got to be a horrible feeling of, uh, of betrayal in that moment. That, oh, absolutely. That, that's got to be a disgusting feeling. Yeah. All right, let's move on. To, uh, Trump is continuing to hit back at uh, LeVar Ball, calling him an ungrateful fool. Not calling him, tweeting out that he's an ungrateful fool. Uh, and like I said, you know, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I... I and he's right, but... <laughs> I, I'm, so, I'm so torn because on one hand, this stuff is so entertaining, but on the other hand, he's my president. Yeah. Uh, President Trump on Wednesday fired back at the father of a basketball player who was released from China this month after sparring with the man, LeVar Ball, over his level of gratitude. It wasn't the White House. It wasn't the State Department. It wasn't Father LeVar's so-called people on the ground in China that China that got his son out of a long-term prison sentence. It was me, in all capital letters, Trump tweeted early Wednesday morning. Too bad. LeVar is just a poor man's version of Don King, but without the hair, unquote. Oh, boy. That's a strong, <laughs> that's a strong label. Again, when I see this, I laugh. I LOL. Well, but like you said the other day, this is exactly what LeVar Ball wants. And this is exactly what Trump wants. Uh, you know, you're, the, these guys were made for each other. This is a, an arch rival, an arch nemesis really come to life here uh, because uh, he found the perfect person that will uh, react and engage every single time. And I think that's what Trump likes. He lives for it, right? He gets that rush. Look, I'm guilty of it, right? So when I get on Twitter, and I don't, you haven't been following me very long, but when I get on Twitter and I go ahead and I put something out there and all of a sudden I start getting people, you know, uh, shooting stuff at me, there is this rush, right? That you're debating, that you're engaging, that you're disagreeing, that you're, you're having this Twitter <laughs> argument. Yeah, <laughs> and so uh, I think I think Trump gets that adrenaline rush out of it, and and you got to remember too the reason, and and I'm just I, this is kind of just hit me, but I think the reason that Trump is fascinated by Twitter and obsessed with it is because he was somebody that up until recently was very disconnected from technology. This was somebody that I believe even as recently as maybe ten years ago didn't even send his own email. And so for him to jump on a platform where he can reach thousands of people and he can engage and talk to, and I think, I think it's something that he's never experienced before. Um, and, and, and I think he's obsessed with it for, for that reason. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know why he's obsessed with it the way that he is. Uh, maybe he just feels like this is the way that it, it's just, it feels right to communicate this way. Um, he said, quote, just think, LeVar, you could have spent the next five to ten years during Thanksgiving with your son in China, but no NBA contract to support you, Trump tweeted on Wednesday. But remember, LeVar, shop or shoplifting is a little thing. It's a really big deal, especially in China. Ungrateful fool, exclamation point. <laughs> the president of the United States going after people personally on his Twitter account. I know I shouldn't be laughing. No, but it's I hilarious. Mean, it is uh, because it. Uh, this is what Trump does. It's entertainment, and it's entertaining, and it's unfortunate that it comes at the stake of our presidency, like you said. Uh, but I think he he loves it. I think he eats it up, and and I, I think he genuinely will goes back to his team and be like, "Oh, did you see what I said to him? Do you see how I got him? You know that sort of thing." Oh, that was great, Mr. President. That was perfect. Spot on. Do it again. <laughs> 
Uh, we were talking a little bit earlier and excited about it. Well, it's too bad it's not in Tampa this weekend, uh, but it's uh, the war of I-4. The war on I-4 yep. is, uh, is in Orlando. UCF versus USF, Orlando Tampa Mayor's Wage Beer for Friday's game coming from My News 13 out of Orlando. Uh, I always love these things. I think they're just fun for the community. It lightens things up. Yeah. Uh, if the Knights were undefeated beat the Bulls, the Tampa Mayor Bob Buckhorn will have to raise the UCF flag here in Tampa. City Hall, and send Cigar City beer and Ebor cigars to the Orlando mayor, Buddy Dyer. If the uh, the Bulls end up winning, however, Dyer will have to raise the USF flag at Orlando City Hall. He'll also send Buckhorn Orlando brewing beer and a cornhole set from the Orlando base uh, true, uh, tail, true tailgate. Uh, um, I can't I'm, remember if they... I'm going to grab, grab my... Just real quick because I want to show people. I want to grab... <laughs> One of the uh, cornhole boards that I have here on the porch. And okay. Show it to you. All right. Go for it. All right. Here, you know, let me bring myself in back in the. Um, but what I wonder when it comes to these kind of bets, I love them, by the way, especially when they do them like for the Super Bowl and uh, World Series and things like that. But I don't know that I remember USF and UCF uh, having this kind of an arrangement before. So maybe somebody in the comments section can uh can bring us up to speed on that uh in talking about lavar ball and uh and uh, donald trump um she said uh let's see paul uh says did you see the uh interview on cnn with ball ball was having a blast with all this of course he loves the attention uh i'm just going through some of the the comments here um on the lavar ball trump thing while you were Getting that. Let's see. Oh, well, we're looking at the back of it. So, a little plug there for the. Oh, yeah. I wanted to give a little plug for custom corn toss. Nice. Lo- local boards, business. Yeah, these boards are like uh, eight, six, eight years old. I don't know, maybe even ten years old, but they're really still in great condition. That's why I wanted to give them a little love. But, uh, cool. A corn hole or corn uh, corn toss when you're talking about the game. Uh, to me, uh, again, this is uh, this was a thing I wasn't very exposed to until I moved out of Miami. Uh, so for me, it's cornhole. But there you go. You're right. It's cornhole. Uh, yeah, I haven't watched the the CNN interview uh, with Levar Ball, but apparently it's amazing uh, because he's <laughs> he's always fascinating to watch. Um, uh, I, you know, I watched uh, a video that this uh, media outlet called Complex put out. Uh, where they go shoe shopping with uh, celebrities and athletes and things like that. And it was him and his three sons. And I mean, it's interesting, right? But like I said, I think there's a whole Joe Jackson dynamic there where he's he's probably pushing his sons pretty hard. Um, and, let's see. And um, But he's all he's working the president, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and, people that are looking at this little uh, back and forth, a lot of people are saying that uh, on LeVar Ball's side of this, it, there, there's no back and forth. He knows what he's doing, and he knows how to keep the president talking about him, and it's just increasing his brand and bringing more sales. Right. No, you're exactly right. And uh, and so far, the, the at least the one kid who's now in the Lakers hasn't lived up to expectations. Um, uh, but it's, it's one of these things where they both realize uh, the value in leveraging the media like this and uh, having them talk about you. Uh, and, and I think he's trying to live vicariously through his sons. Um, you know, again, he's getting interviewed after games and stuff like that. What other parent do you see getting interviewed by ESPN and other media outlets, uh, following one of their kids, uh, basketball games? Not too often. Uh, should we be, uh, memoing in, uh, Eric at this time? Um, he's not in yet. Uh, we can drop him uh, a text if you want. Okay. Uh, yeah. well, let's hit a, something else. We got a, we're going to talk a little uh, nutrition and, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, how to focus, how to, how to look over, over the next few weeks yep. and make, uh, not, not always make the, the worst decision when it comes to uh, eating. And we'll talk to uh, Eric Stratman here in just a second from TNL Nutrition. Um, but I uh, want to get back to this story that we had in Stuff You Should Know um, because it is amazing to me, and I can't wait to see how this plays out. Uh, but allegedly, a CVS employee scammed a customer out of their lottery winnings. Uh, according to this guy, Figueroa, he, um, there we go. 
he uh, he had bought a lottery ticket. This man claimed in a lawsuit that CVS employees stole his one million dollar lottery scratch off card. Carlos Figueroa claimed in a suit. What's better than tailgating? Winning I, big with your lotto. Whoa. Fantasy- What's going on here? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um. The suit uh, says that he purchased the Merry Millionaire Instant Scratch-Off through a vending machine that had cut it in half due to a malfunction. He claims that he was coerced by the CBS employee to hand handing him half the ticket under the ruse of checking if it were a winner. The guy alleges that about 20 minutes later, the employee handed him back what half of a uh, little... Man, I'm damn, sorry about that. Damn pop-ups. You know, well, they pop up, and I, 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 but you can't, I can't even see where they're popping up to turn them off. Uh, it's an auto, uh, one of those autoplay videos, I bet. I gotta, now I gotta figure that out. I'm sorry. sorry. What are you doing? All right. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him. Uh... Oh, no. I, I, well, I thought my uh, computer was uh, possessed for a second. <laughs> we got Bad Dad joining us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just a bad trainer. <laughs> you don't have to awesome. be a superhero to be a shape. That is awesome. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'd like to uh, welcome to the show at this time, Eric Stratman from uh, TNL Nutrition. How are you? Doing great. How are you guys doing? <laughs> you look awesome. <laughs> How's everything? All right, let's rock and roll here. Oh, man, it's right, cold so- outside. You can see we're getting a little snow going there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, so uh, you're, you're obviously not in Florida. So where are you joining us from? Uh, I am in central New York in the Utica area, which is right in between Albany and Syracuse. Uh, and uh, for those of you that are from the Bay Area, I got to know uh, Eric. Well, we've known each other for at least 10 years now. Um, you started yes. a TNL Fit and uh, CrossFit here in the uh, Bay Area. The last I checked in with you had two stores. You have, uh, you have more than you still have the two gyms. Yeah, no, actually, we uh, that was uh, part of the move here is selling the gyms down there and then come up here and uh, start the new life where my wife was born and raised. Oh, you're a good family, man. All right, well, let's talk about those who are – we want to talk, you know, healthy stuff going into the holidays here, get our minds right, because uh, I was doing well, man. I had gotten down below 240. I was at 236, but then all of a sudden – I don't know what it is, you know, the, stre- the stress of life, and I'm eating horribly, making bad decisions, and I'm back up to 247, and uh, that's nowhere where I want to be. So we're going to include you every week in the show and uh, help people uh, get in shape, help motiv- uh, motivate people, educate people along the way, and at the same time uh, make fun of me, live vicariously through my, my things. Um, you know, so let's talk about, the- about that. Hey, I'm sure. Because uh, because this is going to include me like taking tape measurements of of my dimensions every week, right? When we when we oh, do yeah. this program, okay, well, that's weight and, and measurements uh, weekly. Oh, and Johnny, he texted me last night. Do uh, we have an Instagram account for the Wake Dot Show? And I said no, not yet. And he goes, it goes good because I'm assuming what we're going to do is to take pictures of my flabby ass. And put- <laughs> that if, if if anything, that is the sole motivation for the Instagram account. Oh, uh, this, you, you know, I, I'm hiding my chin behind my microphone. I'm hiding every, all this, my, uh, my turkey neck behind the, uh, <clears throat> uh that's why I, <laughs> I thought the idea was you're supposed to like have the camera up high and you look up smart. That's what I need to do. Uh, either that, or I could get healthy. I could eat right. Well, let's get, let's, let's get right into it. Let's talk I about like those it. who are disciplined dieters. Uh, those who live an active lifestyle throughout the year, but find themselves slipping this time of year, every year. Is that okay? In the short, yes. Okay. If you're, if you're, if now, you're good we say, two and a half months out of the year and for five or six weeks at the end of the year, you, go, you binge and you do your stuff, that's okay as long as you get back at it in January. Uh, let's not go that far. Okay. We can, sli- we can slip a little bit on those occasions, maybe a Christmas party here and there, and then we have our Thanksgiving, obviously, and maybe the turkey sandwiches and pie for the few days after. But the idea is, is let's stay consistent. Um, so look at the Thanksgiving meal as you, one of your cheat meals, not just like, okay, for the next four days, I'm going to gorge myself, but instead I'm going to stick to what I'm doing, but I'm going to pick this, you know, Thursday and I'm going to go nuts. And then I'll have, you know, if, like you were just saying, a follow-up sandwich for a couple of days, maybe, 
and then that'll be it until the Christmas party and the Christmas. Well, what? Yeah, exactly. And what's exciting about this is you can have turkey sandwiches every day, all year round. Doesn't matter. It's all going to be calculated into what your protein, fat, and carbohydrate allotment is going to be. So just to also understand, if it it takes two weeks for you to consistently overeat for you to gain weight that you're going to keep. Oh. So okay. you can't so just you... overeat for a weekend and gain five pounds from it. Okay. Not five real pounds. You know, you you can get real, on the scale yeah, like yeah. you're five pounds oh, heavier. Yeah. But, uh, a real five yeah. pounds. All right. So it's two weeks of that uh, constant horrible eating was when your body goes, okay, I'm going to start storing this stuff as fat. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, how should those who will be attempting a new new lifestyle change after the holidays prepare now, focus on now to give them the best chance of success once they begin? Because you know how a lot of people are. By a lot, I mean me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to start right after the holidays. Uh, and so it doesn't matter what I do from now until I'm going to go ahead and, and binge. I'm going to, and then the purge will come later. <laughs> well, hopefully not, but uh, I mean, that is guaranteed weight loss, but uh, supermodels have proved over and over again that is a unhealthy lifestyle. Yes, it is. So going through the uh, timing for what we're going to do for this uh, Thanksgiving or in this holiday season is we want to look at that consistently average always trumps seldom perfection. So if you're staying average with the amount of calories and what we're asking you to eat every day, then you're going to hit your goal. But if you're like, I didn't eat perfect, we've all done that, right? It's uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, you went out to the bar, you had a couple of drinks, you're like, oh, you know, I'll start Monday and you just zombie eat for the rest of the week. And I'm going right. to eat and drink whatever I want, I'm going to start Monday. Instead of starting back Thursday morning and just say, hey, I had a bad night. I'm okay. Let me just see what I have. And that's really where the structure is going to lie with what we're doing with you is that we're going to give you an allotted amount of protein, fat, and carbs each day. You can get them from wherever you want. That's not the beginning pieces of our nutrition program. It's just hitting those numbers and then allowing us to refine them so you can hit your goal and you're going to see movement on the measurements and weight each and every week. Uh, so you talk about the, the fat, the carbs, and the, uh, uh, what was the other, protein intake. Protein. Um, how, how has our understanding of nutrition and health changed in the past 10 years? Because the last time I really focused on this, which was about 10 years ago, it seemed like everybody's just like, just cut out carbs, cut out carbs, cut out carbs. That's all you need to do. Yeah, that was uh, the big piece in the ketogenic diet. Adkins made that very, very popular. The problem with that is, is your body has to go through a process of turning protein into glycogen, what your body actually needs for energy or carbs. So when people can no longer withstand that, they go off the wagon. Their body's been used to not eating carbohydrates. And now they're giving themselves a position, or excuse me, they're putting themselves in a position that they can see the uh, amount of macronutrients that they, sorry, I was getting a little feedback. Their macronutrients, which we're referring to the protein, fat, and carbs, is what we want to really focus on. But now that we've seen and what you're saying over the last 10 years, so we're saying carb-free or just have vegetables or we're just going to go the soup fast and this is it there's never consistency so that's really our theory and what i've seen over the last many decades i've been involved in this while i'm dating myself here saying decades that we're able to actually have consistency in our nutrition because we want you guys to have a nutrition program from day one that you're going to be able to maintain the rest of your life not here's the six week quick fix or here's how you're going to get 10 pounds off by you know, Christmas. What about that philosophy, Eric, where a lot of people want to start their diet with some kind of something that's extreme, whether it's three days of something extreme, one week of something extreme or a couple weeks to try to try, kind of uh, catapult them into the, the lifestyle change. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm definitely for getting some type of body cleanse, body fast, because these come in and understanding the science behind it is that fat cells actually are protective for our body. So it will actually store toxins within the fat cells. 
So the more toxic you are, the easier it is for your body to gain fat and keep it and make it harder to lose. So if we detoxify your body, it's going to be much easier for you to lose fat, which we'll get into, you know, throughout the next couple of weeks. But I don't throw it at anybody ever saying, hey, you need to do a three day water fast. You can't have anything but water and set you up for failure immediately. These are things that will come in probably 90 days into the system so we can have consistency through everything. And then we would start somebody off with a 12 hour fast or a 24 hour fast, then put some uh, vitamins, minerals and herbs that are combined that are going to allow them to really purge that stuff out of their system. Because if you do that too extreme, it can make you pretty sick because you introduce all of those toxins that have been stored in your fat cells for so long. Now they're back in your system. I just, I wanted to kind of rewind it just a little bit, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, deal with the holiday situation. And so, because I would imagine someone who is uh, maybe on a plan that you've developed for them uh, would have a hard time figuring out, okay, if I'm going to somebody's house for Thanksgiving, um, what should I eat? What shouldn't I eat? Uh, you know, and, and because, right, you, you don't get to decide what's being served. You got to kind of deal with what's in front of you. And uh, oh, how I love dealing with what's in front of me. <laughs> this is one of those situations that uh, uh, we want you to track it. So, uh, you know, to give a piece of uh, what we haven't really talked about with the tracking is that we use uh, an app called My Fitness Pal. We don't have any association with them, but most people are familiar that have ever tracked their food. And we just want you to track what you eat. But when you're talking about dealing with Thanksgiving, this is going to be one of those situations I don't want you to stress at all. Eat and drink what you want. The only people that have to worry about Thanksgiving Day are the people that are going to walk on a stage that are bodybuilders or figure competitors this weekend. Raise your hand if you're one of them. <laughs> Neither of us are raising our hands. So, you know, exactly. Like, oh, not me. So, um, that's something we really don't have to worry about, but I really like to have people log what they eat even on those days just because you can go, wow, I didn't realize I consumed 7,000 calories yeah. in yeah. seven hours. I bet. Hey, so I got a, a question that's slightly, uh, slightly on topic, slightly off topic, but um, you know, I recently heard about something that Terry Crews does. Obviously, Terry Crews, the actor, is, is in amazing shape. Um, and he's known for that, right? Um, and right. he talks about eating between 10 and 10. And so he doesn't eat anything before 10 o'clock, doesn't eat anything after 10 o'clock. Uh, and then, of course, I'm sure his diet is very strict. But uh, even if just that timing, right, even just kind of taking that part of, of his plan, is uh, what do you think about that, uh, that being part of uh, a nutrition strategy? Uh, I like it. It's one of the uh, strategies called intermittent fasting. So you can have anywhere between a 12, 16, 18 hour time span between or, or the allotted time you're allowed to eat. So sometimes, you, you know, you'll have folks go all the way till noon and they'll eat noon to eight. Maybe they're an eight hour eating span or like you're talking about with Terry Crews, he has a 12 hour eating span where some people will just eat from when they wake up till when they go to sleep. So it kind of will regulate the amount of calories and give you an actual cutoff or start time when you're going to eat. So is it different for people? You know, uh, we, we grew up with the uh, thought of the breakfast is the most important meal of the day. You're getting up. you got to get something in your system. But I've run into so many people over the years who are very successful. They don't eat breakfast. They don't eat breakfast at all. They're not hungry for breakfast. And the first time they eat may not be till, like you just said, noon, one, two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, it all really depends on how your body reacts. And it, that's a personal level. Like me personally, I will come in and work out before I actually eat because it makes me sick to my stomach. But also there's that science behind the intermittent fasting that it the longer you go without eating in the morning and I don't want to encourage anybody just to not eat but this is a you know having that extended time and you get that hungry feeling your body's actually going after fat for energy because what's fat is stored energy okay. so that's where that intermittent fasting has become more and more uh, popular because if you don't eat your first meal till 10 or noon instead of 7 or 8 in the morning then you've got a little bit more time that your body's requiring calories because your body requires calories every second of the day. 
that's what your basal metabolic rate is, just what your base amount of calories that you burn every single day, no matter what you do for exercise, just breathing, thinking, and being you is burning calories. So that's where that extended time in the morning is going to help. And normally that gets people off to a better mental start so they're able to get the uh, mindset of where they need to go for the rest of the day and then they know that their day is set up ready to go not oh man I got to go through McDonald's and get my sandwich or the taco you know wrap that they got at Taco Bell you know it, it, you can take a little bit more time to plan for your breakfast when you're not eating till 10 a.m. or maybe 11 or 12. Now can you talk real quickly because you were talking about how that time period can actually help you out a little bit because your body needs energy and will go after the fat but there's also a point where your body will kick into another gear and uh, go by the fat right to the muscle and start breaking down the muscle for uh, energy. You got to keep the muscle. <laughs> I didn't know we were getting a uh, gun show. How do you gauge hey. that? <laughs> the gauge. Ooh. Get her done. Oh, wow. He's pushing it up. Sexy. Do, do the you must have been eating your spinach. I get that. My bus driver arms pushing him up to the top. <laughs> all right. Uh, all okay. Right, actually, so yeah, that's right. called. Yeah, that's called. Go ahead. Uh, going catabolic and and you know a positive nitrogen balance because your body does need protein. Uh, there's some other tricks with uh, if you have a cup of coffee, caffeine actually helps to slow that process because it'll block uh, the glycogen uh, in your muscles, so that way your body maintains it. That's getting super deep, but it's really as you said there is that certain point that your metabolism will downregulate and start to decline and go backwards. So you can't take this fasting way beyond what it's intended for. And that's where we can get consistency with you. And throughout this, uh, the time we're going to spend together of how we are going to define what those time periods are, how you feel and what's going to work best for you. Uh, Eric Stratman on the Awake Dot Show this morning. Make sure you share, uh, if you could, share the uh, the show today. And yeah. Eric will be joining us yeah. every single week, talking in nutrition and, uh, and trying to get me back into shape. Well, and speaking of which, uh, I just wanted to tap into our comments. And so Chris Brown, who was talking earlier about being on a six a six week fat loss program, um, had a question. Uh, let me find it here. Okay, so how do you work out in the morning? and not eat until 12. I go to the gym at 6.30 a.m. If I was on this fasting, I would be starving. My gym is uh, the total body CrossFit type gym. Well, let's go into the other mode. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be a guy that we wouldn't recommend that to. So totally joking aside, um, what we really want to see with this is that he would be one that is intended that we would uh, be able to make sure that he is eating post-workout. So he would be the backwards of that. He would have his last meal earlier in the evening. So that his 10 a.m. to the normal person would be, you know, 4 a.m. for him. So that way he's going to work out on an empty stomach. Then he's going to eat right after that. So then we're still going to prescribe for him that 12 hour to 10 hour window to eat. So he's going to probably have his last meal at six or seven at night, not, not eight or nine. So you adjust it to your schedule. Exactly. Eric, what about you? This is something that's uh, been a part of your lifestyle for as long as I've known you. Uh, are you somebody who is disciplined all the time and don't understand, uh, you know, those of us that fall off the wagon constantly uh, or do you have those moments of, of weakness where you get off track and you're not feeling good about yourself? And if so, what do you do to turn that around and get back on track? Well, brother, you talk about falling off the wagon. Guess who the driver is? This Come guy. The guy with the gun show? All right. Yeah, yeah. So, so understand that, you know, when you're, when you're putting this uh, – method in place you can eat as you want you can determine what you're going to have whether it's alcohol whether it's sweets whether it's thanksgiving we're not going to have an issue at all consuming those things it's just that what we started out with if you're consistently average that's going to trump 
seldom perfection. So if I just do average through the holidays, I'm going to maintain, but it's not like I'm going after this major weight loss goal and I can't ever veer from that or go over our calories. So when, uh, when you get a little off track, is there, is there uh, a mantra or how is it that you get yourself back on track? Or just by the nature of your business, your industry, there's constantly somebody forcing you to stay in shape because this is what you do for a living. Yeah, it'd be a little tough if I uh, packed on 50 over the summer and said, hey, I want you to hire me to help you out. <laughs> yeah, oh, but it happens. <laughs> and it is a big advantage being in the industry. But to be completely honest – just as I do with my uh, clients is we have them track their food. And when you look at it and you're like, wow, I just had 6,500 calories on uh, this two hour party I went to for Super Bowl. It kind of puts in that perspective that this is what I need to do. And the other side of that, which is a project we're working on with TNL nutrition coaching is a program called for your fam. So we're trying to, put this mindset into the, the individuals because this puts their program ahead of themselves, meaning you're going to do it for your family because you want to be healthier for your kids, your spouse. You don't want to be a burden later in life. Like you had to, you know, it was a, a, a real uh, shame watching my losing my dad last year and his health declined, but not, taking care of himself, just taking care of his family. And he lost his life much earlier than he should have. So it, you know, really spawned this idea of saying, Hey, let's do this for your family. We don't want to have that grandma that's getting out of years and having an issue getting around. Yeah. We're all going to decline at some point, but let's not do that uh, earlier than we have to, if we just do basic exercise and nutrition. I like that. I like that. I'm gonna do that too. <laughs> Put me in, Coach. Brothers, let's do it. Here we go. It's about Eric. that time. Eric, Eric Strapman, TNL <laughs> Nutrition Coaching. I can't wait to have you on this show week in and week out, whooping my ass into shape and uh, doing the same thing for those who are following along at home. Before we get you off this uh, holiday, what, sir, are you most thankful for this year? Well, I thank God for my family, the opportunity I've had up here, the opportunity to be on this show, and uh, all my friends and family I'm surrounded with. Right. What okay. about you? I I, I know most... your your listeners and the viewers want to know uh, what gets the the fish man thankful. Uh, very thankful year. I got married this year, bought a house this year, and a lot to be thankful for. So yeah. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great Thanksgiving. God bless you guys. Have a good one. Two. All right. And, uh, and as far as we go, Johnny Torres, what are you most thankful before we wrap things up and I go running into the bathroom? <laughs> so my daughter <laughs> came just before Thanksgiving, uh, you know, two years ago. So I think I, I was just uh, a little uh, just overwhelmed by it all. But, you know, every day, man, I just I can't get enough for that little girl. And she just makes my world go around. So, well, I'm also thankful for you and bake more pies in this show. The Wake Up Show. Bye. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure to share, like our page, uh, get the word out. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube as well. <laughs> we'll see you on Friday. No show tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody.